So this is the original Air 75 wireless mechanical keyboard from Nufi. And recently it's got some pretty significant upgrades in the form of a new and improved V2 version. Now I've been using the V2 version for a couple of months now, and here are some of the differences that you need to know between the V1 and the new V2. So I think we should start with the most important factor, right? And that is the price. At the time of this video, the Air 75 V1 is still available on the Nufi website for $109.95. Versus, of course, the V2 for just $10 more at $119.95. So already it's kind of a no-brainer to just get the V2 instead of the V1, unless of course you can find the V1 at a significant discount. And if you are buying any of these keyboards or any Nufi accessories for that matter from the Nufi website, make sure you use code CT10 to get 10% off your entire order. Now this video is not sponsored, Nufi's not paying me any kind of money. I bought this with my own money. I just reached out to them prior to making this video to get a discount code for you guys. So let's start with the physical differences first. So first of all, new colors. The original Lunar Gray was you know, pretty nice. I had no complaints about it, but the V2 now comes with two new colors, which is Ionic White and Basalt Black. Now, as you can probably see, I have the Basalt Black colorway here. Now, quick side note, if you're not a fan of the 75% layout of the Air 75, you can get the Air 60 or Air 96. All of these will have V2 versions. Now, regardless of which V2 color or size you get, um, all of them are actually gonna come with this kind of cool, uh, frosted, semi-transparent plastic on the back. You can actually kind of see the uh, LEDs and the keycaps there. Um, you're probably never going to see this plastic you know, in day-to-day -day use, because this is obviously going to uh, face the desk or the table, but it's kind of a cool design choice anyway. Now, while we're back here, you'll notice that the feet design on the V2 is actually quite different to the V1. You can see in the V1, we just have these kind of crappy, um, just these little rubber feet here. And if you do remember, with the V1, they came with these little rubber feet that you could actually add onto the back of the V1 and kind of give you a little bit more lift. So uh, all you really need to do is just kind of slot it on here. Um, there are magnets, so it kind of does stay attached there, but you'll notice that there's still a little bit of play with it. And if you actually put it down on the desk with both of the feet on, uh, you can't actually adjust anything. So you only really get the one sort of level there. It's not really adjustable at all. Now, if we compare this with the V2 version, you can see now we actually have some adjustability there. So we've got two levels. We can pull the whole thing out like that, uh, or we can click it shut and pull out the shorter one to get a few less degrees. Um, and you can also see and probably hear that this is really, really solid. So there, they look like they're not really gonna crack or break off. Now you'll notice that even though these feet are new, uh, they still fold in so that they're in line with the chassis, they don't stick out. So that means you'll be able to use your V2 on your MacBook keyboard, just like the V1. They'll kind of just slot in between the keys on the keyboard. Now, one thing that remains unchanged on the V2 are the customizable side LEDs. They're really useful and have a lot of functionality. So let me run through them quickly. So the left is actually going to display different colors depending on if the caps lock is on or off. So if I turn caps lock on, you'll see it changes to a light blue. If I turn it off, it just goes back to the default. Now the left is also going to change colors depending on which connectivity option you're using. So if it's wired, it'll be yellow. Uh, if you use the FN key and one, two, or three to switch between Bluetooth connections, you'll see that that uh, flashes blue to show blue for Bluetooth. Alternatively, if you go FN and then four to switch to the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle, it will show green for that connection. Now the right side is mainly for displaying battery levels. Now personally, I like to go FN and then forward slash and that's going to permanently enable the battery level here. So you can see it's showing yellow for about 50% battery at the moment, but that will obviously change from green to yellow to red for low battery. Alternatively, you can also jump onto the Bluetooth settings on your computer, including Mac OS, just a little drop down in the menu at the top, and it'll also show you the battery percentage remaining there, which is really cool because a lot of keyboards, for some reason, just don't have that option. So speaking of the battery, let's talk about the internals. 
Now the V2's battery is 60% larger than the V1 and Nufi claims around 220 hours with the backlight off, which is around a month of battery life, assuming you use the keyboard for eight hours a day. With the backlight on, it's much less, about a quarter of that. So personally, I just keep the backlight off and use a monitor screen bar to light my desk and keyboard. By the way, I definitely recommend buying a monitor screen bar. They're fairly inexpensive as well, but I'll link a video about them down below. Now, in my opinion, the biggest difference between the V1 and the V2 is actually this tiny little wireless 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now, when you're connecting to your computer with this, you'll get the same 1000 Hertz polling rate as if you were directly attaching the keyboard via a cable. Now, the polling rate refers to the number of times your keyboard sends the input data to your computer. Input data as in pressing a key. Now, a low polling rate is perfectly fine for typing and productivity tasks, but you will want a higher polling rate for gaming so your keystrokes are registered faster. For reference, most gaming keyboards advertise a polling rate of 1000 Hertz. Now this is really important if you play games because the Air 75 V1 as well as a lot of other uh, wireless non-gaming oriented keyboards have really, really crappy polling rates when connecting wirelessly. And you can really notice the delay, especially in shooter games. For reference, the Air 75 V1 is actually five times slower at about 200 Hertz polling rate compared to the V1 when using the dongle. Now the previous solution to this problem was to either A, get a gaming oriented keyboard, uh, and you know, a lot of those keyboards don't really have the best switches and they're not the greatest to just type on all day. Uh, or option B was to connect your Air 75 V1 directly to your computer with a cable when you wanted to game. And that kind of defeats the purpose of a wireless keyboard. But now, as long as you're using that 2.4 gigahertz dongle, you'll get the same speeds as if you'd attached it directly. Now, for me personally, I have my V2 connected to my MacBook via Bluetooth for productivity tasks and to my custom built gaming PC via the wireless dongle. I can switch between them instantly via keyboard shortcuts and I don't have any complaints about increased input lag or delay from key press to action on screen when gaming. But apart from the new 1000 Hertz polling rate when connected with the receiver, uh, wireless connectivity between these two keyboards is very, very similar. I mean, they still support the exact same Bluetooth connections and number of connections. I believe it's uh, three different Bluetooth connections at once. Now, another big update with the V2 is that it now comes with QMK and VIA technology. And this essentially means you can quickly jump into a basic web interface and customize everything on the keyboard, like key remapping every single key on the board to whatever you want, backlight effects, macros, layers to expand shortcuts and add additional functionality, and saving or exporting these profiles to use on other QMK VIA keyboards. Don't need proprietary software or drivers, it's all open source, unlike some of the other big players in this area like Logitech with their bloated Logi Options software. On the V1, all you get is Nufi console, which can be buggy and has less features when compared to QMK and VIA. Now, in terms of typing experience, the V2 has a few incremental upgrades when it comes to the internals. So new sound deadening material, lube stabilizers for the switches, and the keys are now double shot PBT plastic instead of the generic ones in the V1 generation, which means the text on the keycaps is just a little bit harder wearing and the keys just feel more premium. Quick side note, you can get shine through keycaps separately if you want the LEDs to light up the symbols on the keyboard. Don't forget to use code CT10. But these upgrades really don't make a huge difference. I mean, they just make the typing experience feel a little bit more refined. And I can tell you right now, if you're typing with these two side by side in person, uh, you are barely going to be able to tell a difference. But the one big major difference here in terms of typing is actually the switch selection. So you can configure the V2 with Nufi's own custom switches, currently Allo, Cowberry, Wisteria, or Moss. Now they are an extra 10 bucks over the standard red, blue, or brown switches. But something to note here is if you currently have the V1 or you're buying the V1 brand new, you're gonna have to buy these switches completely separately and then switch them out yourself because obviously the V1 does not ship with them. Now, as to which switch you should choose, uh, that is something you're gonna have to decide for yourself because there are quite a few of them and it really comes down to personal preference and you can only 
Find out what your preference is by using them in real life. But here is a quick typing test. So should you upgrade to the V2 if you already have a V1? Honestly, look, I mean, it's pretty tempting. You've got new switches, much bigger battery, more customizability, and especially if you're a gamer, that 1000 Hz polling rate is huge. It almost feels like the V1 was like a beta version and the V2 was what Nufi always wanted this keyboard to be. So if you're looking to pick up your first ever Nufi keyboard, my advice is to no questions asked, go for the V2. Uh, it's better in almost every single way. There's a negligible price difference, unless of course, like I said before, you can get the V1 for a significant discount, which I doubt it. Um, you know, the V2 is just a really solid buy. And although it's not cheap, you know, it's around $100, $110, uh, it's more expensive than the Keychron lineup, for example, but uh, it's a pretty solid offering for the price you pay. But apart from that, Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.